want to welcome you to our worship service this morning as we gather around God's means of grace in his word and sacrament, giving thanks to him for the great love that he shows us for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we get ready to wish for our Lord, let's go ahead and greet one another for a minute. And greet one another by the power of in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, we truly do praise your holy name and thank you that you gather us together as brothers and sisters in Christ to worship you in spirit and in truth to gather together this day to praise your holy name and to thank you for giving us the greatest gift of all, and that's the gift of your Son, Jesus, as our Savior. And gracious God, merciful Father, accept the praises of your people. May our songs and our praises to you rise as sweet-smelling incense before your throne of grace. For we give thanks to you for giving us your Son, Jesus, to be our Savior. For it's in his holy and precious name that we pray this prayer and begin our time of worship to you. Amen. We join together now in singing our opening hymn. It's hymn number 500.
Oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am hard to be sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. And upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a call and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I said, steadfast love will be built up forever. In the heavens you will establish your faithfulness. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your offspring forever and build your throne for all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. For I said steadfast love will be built up forever. In the heavens you will establish your faith. Absolve your people. 
people from their offenses and from the bonds of our sins, which by reason of our frailty we have brought upon ourselves, we may be delivered by your bountiful goodness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Begotten 
not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was encountered by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we join together in singing our sermon here, number 787. Acceptable in your sight, 
For we pray this prayer as we give thanks to you. In the blessed and holy name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. And it is in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we meet our message for today as we look at the theme, our life, our salvation. Now, I grew up on the Great Lakes in Michigan. And one of the things that I learned very, very early in my life was the importance of lighthouses. Lighthouses are on coasts, either on the Great Lakes or on the oak, on the coastlands, on the east and west coasts, or even in other countries. And they beam light out into the darkness to help sailors. They truly do shine through the darkness. And they bring comfort and hope and peace to not only sailors, but to those who live on the coast. I was a pastor at a church called Zion Lutheran Church in Harbor Beach, Michigan. It was one of the harbor, what was called harbors of refuge on Lake Huron for freighters and boaters who would get caught out on the lake in a storm. And it had a lighthouse. And I can remember going there at night watching the lighthouse and talking to members and how they talked about how that lighthouse was important to them and how it brought peace to them. So much so that one of the parishioners that I served, a gal by the name of Betty Pease, when she passed away, she made sure that she and her husband and their son had funeral plots facing the lighthouse. Now I asked Betty once, I said, what is it about the lighthouse? And her husband was the chief engineer on one of the Great Lakes freighters, and she said, it guides and directs my husband home, especially when there are storms. And it brought peace to her. So she wanted to be buried facing the lighthouse. When I served at Redeemer Lutheran Church in Waukegan, Illinois, on Lake Michigan, I had a parishioner by the name of Norma, Norma McDonald. She grew up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and her father was a fisherman, a Great Lakes fisherman. And she remembers being a kid growing up the importance of a lighthouse, especially when there was a storm out on Lake Superior, because it would guide the fishermen back home to a safe harbor. As I said, lighthouses bring solace and comfort to sailors when they're out at sea. And here we hear the Lord in Psalm 27 talking about being our light and our salvation. Because we face storms in life, don't we? They come to us, and sometimes we can become afraid. Sometimes we can fear what's going to happen. I know I shared this story with the Bible class a couple weeks ago. I don't know if I ever shared it with the congregation. I don't think I did. Did I ever share with you all the nightmare I used to have? The Bible class I did, but have I in a sermon to the rest of the congregation? I don't think I did. When I was a junior in college, I used to, I started to have a nightmare. And it would come every month. And I would wake up in a cold sweat. Because I was approximately 30 years old, I was in combat and I was in a desert setting, and a sniper fired a bullet at my head to kill me. And I could see the bullet coming right straight for me. And you know how you always wake up before you die? I didn't. I could see the bullet impact and hit me in my forehead, and I died. 
As I said, I had that nightmare on a regular basis, approximately once a month, all the way through the seminary and through serving the people at our Redeemer in Greenville, and then as a Navy chaplain. And when it would happen, my wife would, Janie, she would say, you've had the nightmare that you haven't. And I said, yeah. Well, when I was in Beirut, Lebanon, serving with the Marines as their chaplain, I was 30 years old, I was in a desert setting, and a sniper fired a bullet at me to kill me. It missed my head by two inches. I've had people tell me, Pastor, have you ever thought that maybe God deflected the bullet or he sent one of his angels to do so? And I said, many times. And I can tell you that after that experience, I've never had the nightmare again. Our intelligence people found out why the sniper had picked me out over everyone else. It's because I wore a cross. And the sniper thought that he could get big kudos with Allah if he killed one of the Marines' holy men. That dream was a reality to me. For the simple reason that prior to going into Beirut, I was counseling our Marines from approximately 3 o'clock in the afternoon till 3 o'clock in the morning. We were a quarter of a mile offshore off of Beirut, and we could see the tracers flying. We could hear the artillery and the jets screaming in and dropping their payload and the explosions. And we knew that early the next day we were going to be right smack dab in the middle of that mayhem. And I was counseling Marines because they said they were afraid. In fact, one actually said to me, Chaplain, are you afraid? I said, yes, I am. And he said, you are? I said, yes. He said, well, where are you going to be? I said, I'm going to be in shore with you. He said, you're going to be there right with us? I said, yes, I'm your chaplain. That's where I belong. And he said that brings a comfort to him to know that God's representative was going to be with them. After I got done, at about 3 o'clock in the morning, I went back to my stateroom to get ready because I had to be down in the well deck for at the landing craft at 5 in the morning. And I sat down and I cried. And I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, I just want to go home and give my wife and my two boys a hug and a kiss and to tell them that I love them because that nightmare became reality. We all become afraid. I've talked to people who are afraid of the things that are going on in our world today. The things going on over in Israel, in Ukraine, the situation with China. We look at the things going on in our economy here in the United States, our political disruption in the Congress, and people get afraid. You look at the protests that are taking place. <coughs> The drugs. I can remember the other day talking to a young man that lives in a small town here in southern Illinois, putting up security lights around their house because of the drug situation in that small town, worried about his family and their safety. But when all of these things take place, God calls you and me as his people to focus on Psalm 27. Because it is through Christ and Christ alone that you and I have salvation. It is Christ who pierces the darkness of the world in which we live. 
with the life that only he can give. The light of the gospel message. <coughs> As he reminds us who he is. That he truly is our good shepherd. How many of us have memorized the 23rd Psalm? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And what's the next verse? All right. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what? Why? For thou art with me. God tells us in his word that he will never leave us nor forsake us. That he's with us always to the very close of the age. He's with us here right now. In his sanctuary, <coughs> excuse me, he's with us at our homes. He's with us in our vehicles. He's with us at football games, at the grocery store. He's with us always. And that becomes a comfort to us. And it's interesting when we look at Holy Writ, we look at this Bible, it's talks at least a minimum of 18 times of the light. The light of Christ. And this is in the Old and the New Testament. Isaiah 60 verse 1 he says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And we know who that light is. Because scripture tells us who it is, that it's Jesus Christ, our Savior. The Apostle Paul reminds us too, that we are to walk as children of light, as his people. To be his witnesses, right here at Zion in Bunker Hill, Illinois. And why do we do that? Because we listen to the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself in the Gospel of Matthew when he says to the disciples and says to you and to me, you are the light of the world. We shine with the Gospel message and we bring a message of hope to people so that they too can have the same hope, the same peace, the same joy that is in our hearts that Christ gives us through the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. We boldly shine with the light of Christ in a sin-darkened world and bring a message of hope to the people that need to hear it, to those who are suffering for the simple reason because of our love for Christ, because of his love for us. As scripture says in that while we were yet sinners, Jesus suffered and died for us. That it's the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, that cleanses us from all of our sins. And so we bring this message of hope to a world that seems to be falling apart around us because of the light of the world. Jesus Christ. And we look forward to the day when he will call us all home to be with him forever. When we will live with him in his everlasting kingdom. But until that time comes, he calls you and me as his people, along with the rest of the Church of Christ throughout the world, to proclaim how he is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? No one. For the Lord is our strength and our life. Of whom shall we be afraid? No one. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which truly does pass all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, till we do reach life eternal with Him. Amen. We continue our worship to the Lord now with the gathering of our gifts in the offering.
for the offertory. as 
they continue to go through life with your son, Jesus Christ, our heavenly bridegroom, at the center of their marriages. Bless them, guide them, and direct them, and grant them many more years in service to you as husbands and wives, to their families, to your church, and to the world around us, being witnesses of what a Christian marriage is all about. Lord, in your mercy, we ask and pray, Heavenly Father, that you would be with those who serve our nation and the armed forces, our law enforcement officers, our firefighters, our EMS personnel, as they defend the freedoms we so richly enjoy, so that we can gather together this day to worship you in spirit and in truth, without fear of persecution. Be with them and their families, watch over them and protect them. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, not only do you give us life here on this earth, but you, and you give us spiritual life through the sacrament of holy baptism, but you give us eternal life also. We pray that you would bring comfort and peace to the family of the Reverend Dr. Thomas Horn, whom you had called home to be with you forever. Comfort those who mourn his passing away with the eternal comfort that he rests in your loving arms right now, and that they will see him once again as they remain faithful to your Son, Jesus Christ, who truly is a resurrection and the life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Holy Father, eternal God, we ask and pray that you would be with all those who are suffering here on this earth. We ask that you would be with our homebound and those who are in the hospital. Gracious God, we pray that you would just comfort them with your eternal comfort as you guide and direct the men and women in white taking care of them. For you truly are our great physician of both body and soul. And Lord, we also ask that you would be with those who get ready to partake of the body and blood of Christ in with and under the bread and wine and your sacrament, the Holy Communion. May we truly rejoice and give thanks to you for the sacrifice your Son made for us. For it's through his sacrifice that we have the forgiveness of all of our sins. It's through his glorious resurrection that you give us the blessed hope of life eternal with you. Lord, in your mercy. All of these things, Holy Father, along with those things that are known between you and us, Lord, in our hearts, do we bring before your throne of grace, giving thanks to you in the precious and holy name of Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, and our King. Amen. We continue our worship to the Lord now on page 194 with the service of the sacrament. <coughs> the Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. <laughs> Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Welcome to 